troppo buoni. Buonasera e benvenuti eh, a tutti voi. Dirò una brevissima parola di benvenuto in italiano, poi durante questa serata ci saranno momenti in cui verranno dette altre parole in inglese. Quindi vi do appunto a nome eh, nostro di, della comunità di San Paolo Entro le Mura, io sono l'organista di questa chiesa e quindi a nome di noi musicisti, orchestra e coro e della comunità tutta di San Paolo vi diamo un caloroso benvenuto. Eh, questa serata è molto speciale, e mi fa molto piacere vedere così tante persone venire a celebrarla insieme a noi. Eh, questa serata si inserisce in un contesto musicale che sono i nostri concerti della domenica cosiddetti luminaria a lume di candela però la specialità di questo evento è che eh, coincide con i 150 anni il compleanno di 150 anni di questo edificio e di questa comunità quindi questa serata appunto è dedicata in un certo senso a noi stessi eh, festeggiamo questo compleanno, questo traguardo molto significativo e lo festeggiamo in musica. Quindi questa serata è piena di musica, però non è un vero concerto. Vi do questa piccola eh, diciamo, direzione. Eh, per chi non fosse pratico della liturgia anglicana, questa celebrazione di stasera si chiama Even Song. È una celebrazione che Appunto, eh, è tutta cantata, ossia è un canto della sera tradotto in maniera più o meno letterale. Si tratta quindi di una serie di preghiere, di eh, inni, di letture e di invocazioni, eh, tutte cantate appunto. Avete un, uh, un programma che più che un programma è proprio un bollettino liturgico e quindi potete seguire ovviamente tutta, tutto lo svolgimento della celebrazione e tutte le musiche che saranno eseguite e siete a maggior ragione invitati a partecipare anche con il canto a quelle parti della, della celebrazione dove appunto eh, è previsto che l'assemblea canti insieme ai musicisti quindi non abbiate timore di aprire il vostro libretto e alla pagina giusta cantare le note giuste, speriamo, insieme a noi. Eh, penso di aver detto appunto il minimo indispensabile, veramente siete benvenuti, al termine ci sarà un piccolo rinfresco, quindi siete anche, eh, come dire, invogliati a restare fino alla fine della, della serata e festeggiare insieme a noi. Grazie e buona serata.
A reading from the book of the prophet Ezra. Then the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord. The priests in their vestments were stationed to praise the Lord with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Azaph, with cymbals, according to the directions of King David of Israel. And they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever towards Israel. And all the people responded with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord had been laid. Here endeth the reading.
A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles as recorded in the New, Stand New Revised Standard Version, the translation used here for liturgies and Sundays at St. Paul's. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now, there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, get up and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment, he is praying. And he has seen a vision, a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So, Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately, something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. And he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus. And immediately, he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this the man? who made havoc in Jerusalem among those who invoked his name? And has he not come here for that purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests? Saul became increasingly more powerful and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Messiah. 
Here endeth the reading.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God, who by the preaching of thine Apostle Paul has caused the light of the gospel to shine throughout the world, grant, we beseech thee, that we, having his wonderful conversion in remembrance, may show forth our thankfulness unto thee for the same by following thy holy doctrine which he taught. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which, which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we may show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Bishop Eddington, your graces, your excellencies, dear ecumenical and convocational friends from throughout this city and beyond, on behalf of the board, the vestry, our vicar, the Reverend Francisco Alberca, and the people of St. Paul's Within the Walls, I welcome you here to this 150th anniversary celebration of the laying of our cornerstone. It gives me great joy to worship alongside my friends, Archbishop Jan Ernest of the Anglican Center and personal representative of the Archbishop of Canterbury to the Holy See. Archbishop Kajak Barsamian, representative of the Armenian Church to the Holy See. Bishop Brian Farrell, secretary of the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity. Father Martin Brown from the Anglican and Methodist Office of the PCPCU. The Reverend Matthew Lafferty, Executive Director of the Methodist Ecumenical Office in Rome. The Reverend Robert Warren, my colleague and friend from All Saints Rome. My own bishop, Mark Eddington, and the Venerable Walter Baer, Archdeacon of the Convocation of Episcopal Churches in Europe. The presence of so many friends from churches together in Rome, the Pontifical Gregorian University and the Pontifical Beta College, the Centro Pro Reunione, and from throughout our Convocation of Episcopal Churches helps make this evening's joy abundant and complete. And I thank you all for joining us here. I would particularly like to thank Consul General Boswell 
from the U.S. Embassy to Italy for being here tonight, and Rachel and Prince Jonathan as well. And I would like to thank Ambassador Dano Obongo from the Embassy of South Sudan. You are all most welcome here, and we ask God's blessing upon the wonderful and challenging diplomatic work in which you are engaged. If St. Paul's can better partner with you or your colleagues, please let us know. We would love to do so. I want to give thanks for the members of St. Paul's Youth Orchestra and their families, for St. Paul's Choir and especially Maestro Stefano Vasselli and Dr. Kenneth Walker for their musical leadership and constant dedication to the rich musical life of our church. For our wardens, Amanda Moore and Larry Littman. For the vestry, for the staff of St. Paul's and the Joel Nafuma Refugee Center. It is your hard work and diligence that make this a celebration not only of a building's history, but the festival of a living community, united in service and love. On a personal note, I want to thank Malia and Asia, my wife and daughter, who are my constant reminders of the inexhaustible and steadfast love of God. And finally, I would like to thank the Board of St. Paul's, especially our President, Marnie Dawson Carr, and our architect, David Yeager. For without them, this temple whose foundations were laid 150 years ago would not shine with over a decade's worth of restoration. And this home to many would not be as sound, as beautiful, or as equipped as it is to live out the mission of God that has been entrusted to us. St. Paul's was the first non-Roman Catholic church erected within the ancient Aurelian walls of Rome. And the laying of our cornerstone on January 25, 1873, was meant to mark the beginning of a new era in the life of this city and this country. The Reverend Robert Jenkins Nevin, who placed the cornerstone, cornerstone deep in the earth that day, had these words to say to the gathered congregation. We are building now not in the spirit of petty triumph over a fallen order of things, nor of wanton aggression upon or loudmouthed controversy with any form of Christian faith. But we are building first to meet the absolute religious needs of our own people and to set forth worthily the reasonable worship that is dear to us at home, and not less that rightful liberty of conscience, which is the first and most sacred of human rights, and without which no government, however wisely framed, can ever hope to stand. The Grace Church congregation, which built St. Paul's served its initial mission of gathering Americans connected to the legation and embassy for worship here in Rome. And we remain a place where Americans, be they Episcopal or not, are warmly welcomed into our common life. But I give thanks to God that over the years, this church has seen fit to carry forward the all embracing aspects that arise from American Episcopalian culture while becoming a multicultural, multilingual community of faith. For me, this is what it means to be the beloved community, 
This is the great witness of our church and the charism that we hope to cultivate and share, both alongside our siblings in the body of Christ and with a world that seems to prefer division and dissension instead of a shared destiny. Our life is made more abundant when we find ways to honor and combine our unique and wonderful God-given gifts into a harmonized witness as Christians from East and West, as citizens of many nations, and as members of Christ's one body. That is the message of these Burn jones mosaics in our apps, and we hope to keep living it out faithfully through our worship, through the ministry of our refugee center, and through forging stronger bonds of affection and collaboration with our ecumenical and interfaith companions. The ushers will not come forward to take up an offering tonight. But should you wish to support these efforts financially, you can do so online by following the QR code that's found in your bulletin. And I do hope that you will all stay for the reception in the back of the church following the conclusion of our service. Once again, we are so glad that you are all here. We look forward to our shared journey in the years to come, and thank you for helping us celebrate this important milestone in our corporate life. Now I'd like to invite Bishop Eddington to say a few words as well. Thank you, Austin. Good evening, brothers and sisters, beloved in Christ. I have good news for you, and the good news is this will be brief. When this building was built on this land, it was itself an ecumenical statement. And so I give thanks to have so many of our brothers and sisters from the church militant on earth here with us today. Austin named them, and I especially want to welcome and recognize my brother, Jan Ernest, the director of the Anglican Center here in Rome, who has been a good and great friend of the Episcopal Church and of this parish. This morning in church, you know, we started this celebration, by the way, early this morning. I've been a bishop for almost four years now, but this is the longest day of church I've had since I started this job. If you'd been with us this morning in church, you would have heard who it is in the world Jesus comes to create that is celebrated and blessed. It's not the powerful, it's not the wealthy, it's not the glorious, it's not the influencers, it's not the tech CEOs, it's the poor and the meek and the mourning, the grieving, the broken, the poor in spirit, the peacemakers. And my friends, I testify to you that if you came on any day of the week to this place and went to the basement, you would find the poor and the meek and the poor in spirit and the hungry and those who mourn and the peacemakers here, gathered here and being blessed. And so this place does the thing that we are called to do, it still creates that upside-down world. And I hope someday you will come and join us in it. It is hard to escape that there is an empty chair here tonight. It's the one back there. It belongs to someone that I had hoped might be here tonight, but instead our presiding bishop sent us greetings that I am pleased to read out to you. 
written on the 25th of January, the very day that celebrated the anniversary of the laying of the cornerstone. To the Reverend Austin Rios, rector, and the wardens, vestry, and people of St. Paul's within the walls, grace and peace to you in the name of our loving, liberating, reconciling God. The whole church rejoices with you as you begin your season of celebrations marking the sesquicentennial of the building of St. Paul's. While I know your parish has a much longer history of witnessing to and working for Jesus' message of transforming love in the city of St. Paul, the beacon of your inspiring tower has for nearly a century and a half sent a message on behalf of the Holy Episcopal Church for the idea that we are all called to be part of the Jesus movement wherever we are. The presiding bishop then, perhaps not surprisingly, goes on to quote the very same words that Rector Nevin wrote 150 years ago. Austin and the presiding bishop are of one mind. But he goes on to say this, those words have not lost their power 150 years later. Freedom of conscience is central to the prophetic message of radical equality and human dignity that was central to the preaching of Jesus and his vision of the beloved community. That inspiration has given life and breath to the many vital ministries you have served for so many years, especially today, the amazing work of the Joel Nafuma Refugee Center. I have asked Bishop Eddington to share this message with you on the occasion of your celebration on the evening of January the 29th as you gather to give thanks for the inspiration that dared to build our church in Rome and the spirit that has led to its journey of faith ever since. May those who follow us look back on this day 150 years from now and give thanks that we were good stewards of that inheritance and joyful sharers in the work so well begun in a day of great ambitions. Faithfully in Christ, the Most Reverend Michael Curry, presiding bishop and primate. My dear friends, I can only add to that that I have the high honor and the distinct privilege of bringing to you the greetings, the love, and the support of the people and clergy of all the convocation of Episcopal churches in Europe. When I rose, I was about to say the people who laid that cornerstone so long ago could never have imagined all of you filling this church gathered here, but you know that is unfair to them. They could have. They did. They were outrageously ambitious. Thanks be to God that they were. And thanks be to God that the man who stands in this place today as the rector of this church follows in that line of outrageous ambition. And so the one person I am able to thank that he was not is Austin Rios, the tenure rector of this place. I give thanks for his ministry, his witness, his companionship, and his vision. Watch out, watch out, more is coming. The only thing he said tonight that really bothered me were these words, the ushers will not wait on you for the offering. That's terrible. <laughs> well, I will. Or you have an opportunity to be part of this amazing work. Do not miss it. God bless you. Thank you all for being here.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Thank you.